Hello and welcome back to Mission Backlog. The Forgotten City is now my fourth review in this first Backlog playlist series. I hope you're enjoying the reviews so far and uh, hopefully I'm improving a little bit as we go. The keen-eyed among you may notice this game wasn't actually in the playlist selection. Uh, however, it was announced it was leaving Game Pass um, and I didn't want to miss it so I had to jump on and play it before it did. And boy am I glad I did. What a little gem. Amazingly, this game started out as a mod for Skyrim, created by just one person, which racked up over 4 million downloads. After receiving so much attention and praise, it allowed the creator to start a small development studio called Modern Storyteller, whose first project was to remake the mod as a standalone game, and this is the version I played. What a story though, and before even jumping into the game, I was excited to see what all the fuss was about. I really enjoyed my time with this game, and it's a testament to what can be created by a small team who have enough passion and love for what they do. This is why I tell people to play indie games. You don't get the experiences you get in indie games from AAA studios, and not anymore anyway. It's a poor analogy, but I'd say it's kind of like the difference between TV shows and films. You'd be missing out on a huge amount of quality content if you only ever watch films. Right, so what's so good about it then? The game begins with you waking up on the bank of the river Tiber in Italy. You are greeted by a stranger who asks you to go and find her friend who has gone to explore some ruins nearby. Typical beginning to a Skyrim side quest. Sure, why wouldn't I go? So off you trot and end up falling into a secret underground Roman city, complete with stunning architecture and vistas, as well as a cast of intriguing characters you'll get to know very well during the course of your playthrough. I don't want to say too much more about the story, as it's the main selling point of the game, and incredibly well written, with many re reveals throughout, so rest assured I won't say more than the initial setup. Upon arriving at the city, you quickly find out about the Golden Rule, which is, many will die for the sins of the one, which you are told means if any one person commits a crime, you will all be turned into gold. This leads to all kinds of moral dilemmas and interesting social situations. When the inevitable does happen and the slaughter begins, you find you are looped right back to the beginning to live the day all over again. And this is where the game really begins. You need to find a way of breaking the time loop you are stuck in, which will involve exploration and talking to the many excellently written characters. Each one has their own background story, motives and problems for you to solve. This setup leads to some excellent storytelling opportunities, and it is one of the best written games I've played in a long time. It also creates an interesting and unique gameplay loop. The gameplay is very much puzzle solving via exploration and dialogue options. Don't go into the game expecting deep RPG systems like Skyrim, or even extensive combat options. There is some light combat and some very light platforming, though it's not the focus of the game and is, is mainly there for pacing. The game is effectively one big puzzle, you're trying to find out how to break the time loop, though it's made up of many smaller ones. You'll have to figure out how to get certain things done during the course of a cycle and uh, what order things need to be done in to achieve this. Once successful, you'll open up new options or areas which develop the story further and lead you closer to the final solution. Most of the people you encounter will have their own quest lines and hidden secrets to reveal. I found the whole thing extremely satisfying and found there to be enough variety to keep me interested throughout. It's certainly not a walking simulator, so don't worry if that's what you were thinking. One thing I did worry about at the beginning of my playthrough was that it would become repetitive playing the same day over and over again. Don't worry though if you were thinking the same. The game is designed in such a way that once you've completed a quest, you won't have to repeat it. You'll see what I mean. Again, I don't want to spoil too much, but there are many locations to explore in this game, and the journey to finding these places is a lot of fun. The combat is serviceable, and serves its purpose in changing up the gameplay. It is a bit clunky though, as I find combat to be in Skyrim itself. Your main weapon will be Apollo's bow, which shoots bolts that turn whatever it hits into gold, be that people or objects 
um, and this leads to some clever platforming solutions actually such as turning ivy into gold to create a walkway or a ladder. Though not action packed, I really do think this game would have something for most people. It's not your standard gameplay and I think that's precisely the point. The developers are trying their own thing uh, and I think it works. Visually the game is stunning, um, especially considering the budgets involved. The look and design of the world is amazing, and it allows you to get really immersed in the place. The character models leave a little to be desired. You'll know what I mean if you've played any recent Bethesda games, though it's not enough to detract from the experience. And while on the characters, the dialogue and voice acting is superb. Every line of dialogue has voice acting, and the quality is great across the board. It certainly helps to propel the immersion to another level, and I think without it, the game would be lacking a crucial element. Did you just leap into my villa from the balcony a hundred feet above? That was either extremely reckless or impressively clever. Well, why have you risked life and limb to see me? There is some music through most of the game, though the main purpose of this is just for ambience rather than anything else. It's decent and helps set the tone for the era and the setting you were in, though it's not the star of the game. I played on the Xbox Series X and didn't experience any crashes or major glitches, it ran pretty well throughout. The only thing I could really list as a problem would be the game kind of pausing during gameplay for loading, usually when walking around some of the larger interiors. It's only for a second or two though it is something that does take you out of the moment slightly every now and again. In summary, I'm really glad I played this before it left Game Pass, as I fear I never would have otherwise. It's an excellently put together piece of world building and storytelling, with some truly special moments. It had me constantly wanting to press forward to find the answers that would lead to salvation, and at less than 10 hours to complete is the perfect game to play over a few days. I wasn't sure going into it if I would enjoy the time loop mechanic, but I actually found it incredibly satisfying and it has inspired me to try some other time loop games. If anyone wants to recommend any worth playing, then please do so in the comments. My rating system is a buy, play if it's free, or avoid. This for me is definitely a buy. Even if you don't think you'd enjoy this type of game, I'd recommend you give it a go. You may be pleasantly surprised. It's a shame it's not on Game Pass anymore, though it may well come back one day and it can probably be found on some other services. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Now on to the next one!